to the lecture series. Well, I am, uh, can you hear me? Yep. All right. I'm really excited to be here. I love BYU. I'm a diehard Cougars football fan. Um, it's been an up and down season. Um, but I, I, uh, I just love BYU. I love that we could start with a prayer. I mean, that's, that's amazing. And I love the context in which we get to learn at BYU. Um, I, you know, more than anything, I love being a dad. My uh, two kids, my son Ashton's four and a half years old and my daughter's two and a half years old. And then we have one on the way due next month. Um, I love, I'm, I'm in the young men's in my ward. I love being in the young men's. Um, and uh, I have a testimony of the gospel and believe that, you know, that's the important thing here on this earth. And so I'm really grateful to be at BYU. Um, I, uh, yeah, I started, you know, just a little bit about me. I grew up in Farmington, Utah. Uh, I went to Beaumont High School and came to, uh, to BYU in 2007. And then went on my mission to Mexico, came back um, 2010 and uh, studied, I was studying chemical engineering. I, I feel like I've always been an entrepreneur kind of at heart. Um, but I, my plan was not to come to school to start a company. It was like come to school to get an engineering degree to then go to, to business school to then get a job. And then maybe later, like in my life, when I knew something, I would start a company. And um, I just, uh, I love the, the innovation and entrepreneurship culture that, that was here. And it just sucked me in, uh, rang true to who I was. And uh, I'm very grateful to Scott, who I was just up in Scott's office. And six and a half years ago, I remember sitting in the exact same office, having a very similar conversation where Scott was encouraging me to be a leader. And I thought, Scott doesn't even know me that well, but he's encouraging me to be a leader. And, and that's kind of been the, the, the one job that I've, I've stuck with over the last six and a half years. it anyways because I've already prepared it. Um, talk a little bit about Outlet, where we're at, kind of what our vision is, and then I want to go into kind of like some of the, the dirty details of how we got started. I'm hoping that like my experience can be of some value to those who are thinking about entrepreneurship as, as a path in life. Um, and uh, you know, before I get started, I just want to talk about the, the motto at BYU, which is enter to learn, go forth to serve, I think is the perfect motto for entrepreneurship. Um, the businesses who succeed are, are the ones who figure out how to serve people in a significant way, in a scalable way. Um, and ultimately, like the product market fit, you may have heard of that. It's basically just saying that you found something that actually helps somebody else in their life. And when you've, when you've done that, um, people will pay you money for it and you build a business. And uh, ultimately, if you, if you focus on the service aspect of your business and how you're helping people change their lives, then the business side of it will often take care of itself. So I love the motto, and I think it's a, it's a foundation for entrepreneurship. Um, so when talking about Alan, I want to talk about this journey that parents go through. Having a child, who here is a parent? OK, so it's like a younger group at BYU. Having a baby is the biggest change that we go through in life. Um, it's a change in your health, your sleep, your priorities, your spending. Target just did a study and, and said that Having a baby is the biggest spending change we go through in life. Our, our spending priorities even change. Um, and parents with zero training, um, you know, just to figure out how to be a, a regular human being, can almost take care of myself. Uh, then all of a sudden you have this baby and you become a medical caregiver overnight. Um, and uh, parents take on these new roles of doctor, nurse, sleep trainer, teacher, dietitian. And um, I went through more training to get a driver's license than I did to become a dad, um, which is true of most parents. I was 24 when we had my son Ashton, and um, that's the pretty close to the average age of parents in the United States, and very close to the average age in, in, uh, at BYU. And so you leave the hospital, and I just remember that moment when I walked out of the hospital, and, and I realized like it was up to me, you know, like. I am the one that's solely responsible for like the health and safety of this person that I care more about than anything in the world. And um, one of my biggest concerns, and one of the biggest concerns that most parents have, um, is around sleep. Uh, SIDS is the number one cause of infant mortality. 
the biggest risk that, that babies face their first year of life. And uh, my wife and I were extra concerned because our, our kids are at a higher risk of congenital heart defects because of what she has. And uh, so I remember talking to a friend who's a nurse at the hospital about this technology that they use in the hospital called pulse oximetry. And it's this little red light that they put on your finger if you guys have ever been to the doctor and you have that light on your finger. And through light, you can measure somebody's heart rate and oxygen level. And then, um, and then if something's wrong, it sounds an alarm and the doctor and nurse know to check on baby. And I, I, when I learned about this technology, I thought that's, that's exactly what I need as a parent. I need to know when to check on my baby. And I need to know if something's wrong. Just like it's a safety net in the hospital, um, I believe that parents needed that same safety net at home. Uh, just to give some perspective, there are about 70 babies that pass away every year in the car from car accidents. Um, when you compare that to the number of babies that pass away in the crib from SIDS and, and um, accidental suffocation, it's, it's 3,500. So it's literally 50 times the problem that car seats solve. And the crazy thing is that there's technology, well, and it, it hasn't changed in the last 20 years. Um, so back in the, the early 90s, they figured out that if you could lay your baby to sleep on their back at night, um, it would help prevent a lot of these issues. And we saw this, this great change. And then for the last 20 years, they haven't been able to make a difference um, with SIDS. Um, and there's technology, like I talked about, that exists in the hospital that saves thousands of lives every year by helping, parents, or helping doctors know when to check on their patients. The problem with this technology is that it was built for adult patients in the ICU under anesthesia with a, with a nurse and a doctor supervising them. It's a big, bulky, it's got wires going into the crib, it costs about $3,000, um, and it's not connected, so you have to be like standing next to the monitor to get the information. And uh, so we thought, if we can take this, this life-saving information, access to the same technology and make it appropriate for the home. They actually kind of fit into the nursery, reduce the false alarm rate, make it affordable. Um, we think it could help parents. And not only could it help save lives, it could just make that first year experience better for parents to know that their child's okay. And that's what we've done. We've, we've created a, uh, Owl is a little smart sock that tracks your baby's heart rate and oxygen levels, uh, along with some other things. It can notify you in real time uh, if you need to check on your baby. Um, the sock, connects through Bluetooth to a base station. Um, the base station acts as your primary monitor and also sends all that information up to the cloud so you can see it on your smartphone. Um, so there's a lot of different like, technologies that are going in here. There's you know, medical technology, there's IoT, Bluetooth, backend infrastructure, you know, the, the app. It's a pretty complex product. Um, and, and, uh, and then you can see all the information on your phone. And one of the things we realized early on is that Parents need, um, they need more information, but they don't need that much more information. What they really need is the right information at the right time, right? Um, knowing your baby's heart rate and oxygen levels when your baby's okay isn't that helpful. Uh, but knowing when to check on your baby is. And so the, the base station and the app actually play a really critical role in that. And over time, parents stop using the app and they just glance at the base station. If it's green, it means everything's good. And then they, they um, know that they can go to bed and get deeper sleep. We had six customers come into our office and we asked them to draw their life before hour and after hour. And um, they all drew the exact same picture. Before hour, it was like worried, stressed, you know, bloodshot eyes. After hour, they, they would draw a stick figure of them laying down with Z's coming out of their head. And they said it just gave them deeper sleep. It's like that moment before your head hits the pillow and everything you can do just to know that something's up, checking in your baby was, was really helpful. Um, so I want to talk about some of the accomplishments. And I'm doing this mostly, like, I want to start with where we're at today, and then I'm going to go back to the story of how we got started um, so that, that you can kind of tie it together. The biggest thing that we've done that we, we stay really focused on is, is how, how impactful is Allo really, this technology? We've now sold close to 500,000 monitors. So this is a little bit outdated. Uh, the sewage rate is one in 1,000. And we've had now, I think it's close to 700 uh, stories where Allet has uh, been able to notify parents in, in life-threatening situations. So we really believe that Allet is making a huge difference. We've collected the largest data set of infant health that's ever been collected, and we've partnered with some of the biggest health insurance companies and, um, and uh, Seattle Children's, Microsoft, that are working on these SIDS projects. And Allet probably has and will continue to have the most important database in helping us understand what causes SIDS. Um, 
We also, uh, you know, for every parent, most parents aren't going to have this issue. It's just a better first year experience. The, the iPhone uh, has a net promoter score, which is a measure of satisfaction of about 61. And uh, Owl is right up there with your top consumer brand. So parents love using the product, which is a really important thing to solve when you, when you reference back to hospital technology. We also won the best baby monitor of 2017. We won it again in 2018, which is crazy because when we started in 2015, like at the very end of the year, it cost us like $1,000 to acquire a customer on Google Display Ads because parents didn't know what the sock thing was, right? And the, the standard baby monitor at that time were, were these big, you know, kind of video cameras that you could see your baby. And what we're seeing is this big shift from passive monitoring to proactive monitoring in the parenting space. We also won a lot of other awards and accomplishments, which is cool. And um, like Scott mentioned, uh, we'll, we'll be close to 50 million in revenue this year. Um, and we've, we've had the product in the market for about three years now. The other really awesome thing about Alvid is that we're not, it's not like an early adopter techie product. So we sell more monitors per capita in, the, in middle America, like in Ohio, than we do in San Francisco and New York. And that's a really important measure for us because we want to make sure that the product has like true product market fit and it's not just a gadget. Um, if you go on to like GoFundMe, there's, I think there's close to a thousand GoFundMe campaigns to help people raise money for outlets. And if you compare that to like a Nest thermostat, there's maybe two or three of that. You'd be kind of embarrassed to go on and try and like get your friends to raise money to help you buy like a Nest thermostat, this luxury item. Um, but outlet, it's, it's definitely seen as more of a need to have than a, 